Welcome back YouTube, it's Robert Hall and in today's video we're going to dive deeper into the LED lamp that is on the 8600 Pro and just how capable it can be. Back when I did my Godox 8600 Pro review, I told you guys that I thought that the LED lamp was one of the primary reasons why you might consider upgrading to this model. The original Godox 8600 only had a 10 watt LED lamp, but when they released the Pro, they put a 38 watt LED lamp on it, making it far more capable for uses as a modeling lamp inside a studio, as well as some light video applications. And that's exactly what I'm doing today, is using the 8600 Pro as my primary key LED light. I've got a few extra panels in the back just to illuminate the background, but other than that, all the light that you see on me is just the 8600 Pro in a double diffuse softbox that's 34 inches. But the primary thing I want to address first isn't necessarily the quality of light. I want to talk about how the 8600 Pro and more specifically its fan that comes on when you're using the LED is going to impact the audio that you would have in your videos. So for a frame of reference, first I want you to hear what this would sound like with on-camera audio. So this is the audio that is straight from the microphone on my Sony A7 Mark III. Now the Sony A7 Mark III is probably only two feet away from the actual 8600 Pro, and this is what the audio sounds like with the fan at its middle stage. But you're not using the microphone that's on your camera for your audio purposes, right? Well, for those that are, I hope that was a good frame of reference, but most people are gonna be using either a shotgun microphone or a lavalier microphone. So now everything that you're hearing is from my Rode NTG 4 Plus microphone, which is positioned just out of frame. Like, if you can imagine where my fingertip is, that's where the microphone is. Less than a foot from my face, plugged directly into my Zoom H4n audio recorder. So I'm going to go silent for a moment so that you can hear what the sound is like with just that unedited. But if you look here, when I'm silent, the audio from this is only negative 48. I mean, it's barely registering, and I'm recording my voice to peak at negative 6 decibels. But this isn't the loudest that the 8600 Pro can get. So what I'm gonna do next is go all the way up to 81%. Anything over 80% will kick that fan into its highest gear, which is also the point at which it's the loudest. Oof. But now we're gonna go back to the Sony's built-in microphone so that you can hear what that's like because I can see it's peaking like crazy, so here you go. That is some really strong ambient noise, and as you can see, when I'm talking along with it, it competes quite a bit. But with a directional microphone, it's still not that bad. Let me go silent again. So we're still staying below negative 40 decibels, which is really far from the input level of my voice, so it's still not competing too much even when I'm speaking. And with a little bit of post-processing, you can easily reduce this and omit it completely. And this thing is just out of frame, right over the shoulder of the camera, so you can imagine if you were bringing it further away from your audio recording equipment, it would not impact it as much. One quick note, you can now use the AC adapter to power this LED light as well. But the AC adapter does have its own little fan that runs a little bit higher of a volume than this one does, so that can impact your audio a little bit more, but when using your battery, this is as loud as the fan gets. So now that you have a frame of reference for both how this can look and how this can sound in an indoor environment, let's take a look at just how capable it is outdoors. Let's take a typical sunny day, it's very bright outside, although you're still in some open shade, maybe blocked by a building or a cloud going overhead. That's the circumstances that I was shooting this video in. Now, as I mentioned, in a softbox, even with just a single layer of diffusion, the 8600 Pro's modeling lamp will not be very useful. It doesn't matter if you have it at 100% power, unless it is right on top of the subject to the point where it's gonna be in your camera frame, then the LED modeling lamp, it's not gonna be good for establishing focus, it's not gonna be good for illuminating an interview, there's just not much that it's gonna be useful for in those conditions. But I did show in my initial review that 
inside, indoors, when you're in a controlled environment, it doesn't even have to be pitch black, like just a regular studio indoors with some daylight coming in. It can be very useful as a modeling lamp and it can be very useful as a constant light for interviews or any type of video that you're recording. But if you put on the standard reflector, you actually can use it a little bit outdoors. Still needs to be at 100%, but this will give you a few feet that you can have the LED compete with some pretty bright conditions. You can see as I remove my hand back and forth from the 8600 Pro's reflector that the light falls off when you get a few feet away. It looks like you've got maybe four feet max where it's making a difference and even filling in the shadows at all. Beyond that, it's really not doing much outdoors. There's one more thing that I realized I never tested that some of you have asked about. So in wrapping up, we're gonna see just how long the 8600 Pro's battery lasts with the modeling lamp on at full power. And rather than come back and comment on it and record a video, instead, while this is happening, I'm gonna start editing this video. So like this video if it helped you out, subscribe if you wanna see more, and until next time, keep on shooting, YouTube.